rain has finally got a hold of me. Uh, it has been a busy couple of weeks now with TV testing and the way the weather was. But the first video actually went very well. I never thought it went as well as it did. I never, my intentions were never set out to be as well as it did, but it, I've been doing well with a lot of people. Uh, she's looking for part two, but for part one, there has been a lot of questions being asked. And instead of answering every question one to one, I'll try and wrap it up here within a couple of minutes and let everybody hopefully answer everybody's questions. Uh, very simple calf comes into the calf pain after 15 minutes of being born, straight into the single parent of both. Uh, navel straight straight away with 80 10%. And then we'll get a uh, bit of calf protect. Now that's the first two essentials before a calf is under that pen. We'll get that straight away. There's no questions asked, that's just a must. Simple as the calf protect uh, simply lines the guts. At this stage, a very young calf, the most important thing is get the guts lined. You have to look after the guts at such a young age. There's no question of that. So that's done straight away as soon as under pen and then claustrum. And then for the next two days after that, I will get a squirt each day of Privita calf protect just to help the guts line the guts. Uh, there was a couple of questions about scar. First thing, always ask your vet first. Always ask your vet first. What's the best advice? For me, first thing I do if I can't take scar is sample it. Don't guess what it does. Do not look at it and think I know what that is because you don't. Simple home kit scar test it, it'll tell you what you have. At the start of this year, I had a wee bit of uh, Rotovac Corona scar. Very simple charcoal, a simple jag, calf cured. If it was crypto, simple again charcoal down the throat, a jag. After a vet, what's best to use for jagging? and uh, problem solved. Again, stay on two weeks, over to the pens, then over the catheter. So, in goes the cab, into the pen. Uh, I will never stand in the pen. My feet will never literally go into that pen. Because my feet have been in the cabin pen, been out in the yard. My feet have just followed as many bugs and viruses and germs as you can think of. I will not go into that straw. I should never go into that pen. Open the gate, very simple, open the gate, lift your calf in, and when I'm feeding the calf, I stand outside the pen. Don't go under the pen. All you're doing is taking in bugs and bacteria all the time. Calf, after a day or two, will start nubbing the straw. First thing we'll pick up will be bugs. Uh, scur, sorry, scur. Uh, I do feed the calves, cross them, and then we will get um, second stirs, like I says. Uh, I do add a supplement to it, this is a simple milk shake. Uh, it suits me grand, it basically for me, it, all it does is clot the milk and the guts. Um, it does plenty more, but I'm not going to too much fine details. But basically what it does is clot the milk and the guts. Stop the milk and get it through the body. The most important thing is keep the milk in the calf for the best results. So we simple thing, stick it into the calf, got me going. This week I'm going to talk about the calf feeders at our yard. So I'll give you just a small quick talk about how they work and how they are benefit to me. Uh, I know Lorraine did ask me a couple of weeks ago to do it, but I just didn't have time. We were TV testing, and I'm sure, like everybody else in the country, this week's weather has been really cold, and we have been busy with calves. Uh, they were sick. I think everybody's calves in the country were sick. It was just that cold. As you can see, around here we had the bulby hooks and stuff like that, just to try and keep them extra warm. Uh, it did work, but thankfully now by the end of the week here the weather has come up again and the cars have to run again. It was nothing serious, it was just a bit of pneumonia and a few heaters got the job sorted. The calf feeders, they are uh, Hollam and Lou calf feeders. Brit Milk at the time when I was buying these calf feeders were selling them, so I just bought off Brit Milk. Again, there's no fault in any other calf feeder, but these are the ones that we choose, uh, or cho uh, choose at the time. Uh, they're very simple machine to work, very easy to work out, and they're handy for feeding calves the way we rear them, as in batches all at one time. Uh, as you can see, there's again 60 calves in this uh, pen. They're all done the calf feeder within two weeks. Easy taught, all the same size, all the same age, more or less. Handy throw them in. Maybe one of the downsides, but uh, not really the calf feeder's fault. I wouldn't say it's the calf feeder's fault, but the, the downside of having a batch of calves that size is they need to be all the same size. They have to be all the same size. And what I mean by that is, 
if I put 20 calves on there on, say for example today, and then in two weeks time, put another 20 calves on, well there's a size difference there already of two weeks. It's not major, it's not a big problem. But if I don't put another 20 on, they say, two weeks after that again. So that's really nearly a month between the oldest calf and the youngest calf. That becomes a problem at the stalls because the big calves will bully a wee calf. There's no question that they will bully. They will actually trample over the top of it. So a way around that is, if you take my pen for example, you'd have to divide the pen in two and put 20 calves on a pen, put one stall to that pen, and then I'm going to bring over my next 20 calves in two weeks time, put another stall into that pen and get them calves taught. Once they're taught and up and going, you could probably move them 20 calves and along the first 20, so that's 40 in a pen, and then move the next 20 and to the smaller pen again to get them going. It's not ideal maybe, but at the same time it works. You have to look after your calf. The calf is the most important thing in the shed, in the yard. So you have to do what the calf wants, what it needs. So that's a way around that if your calving pattern is spread over. Uh, calf feeders are very simple, as you can see. Collars around the calf's neck. That's basically their identification number. That's all it means. So it is, it's just their ID number, if you want to call it that. There is a button tag on the far side of that, which is just a reader. And that brings all my details up on this machine. Now these two machines you're sitting looking at here are probably give or take 10 years old. They're probably the first machines that Hallam and Lou brought out. Uh, they're simple, basic, basically the way I like it, simple, basic. I don't, I'm not into technology, I'm not a wild technology, but they do what I want to do. Feed the calf, give them as leaders, keep them on it. So if you want to come over and take a look, basically there's calf standing and looking to feed. It's calf number 56. It's uh, 1.4 litres, it's due. Hold on, I bring it up. So if I fly down to 54, for example. There we are, 54, 1 litre. The last drunk, last visit was 5 o'clock this morning. Next visit, 4.44. It's on the cab machine, 61 days. As you can see, it's more or less finished and the calf machine has already weaned that calf down to near enough it's getting very little milk per day so i don't have to worry about a calf drinking milk every day and all of a sudden coming to nothing this machine will feed it probably four liters between three and 15 days old and then it'll increase the liters up to about six liters a day at its peak at probably 30 days old once it comes 40 days old she'll slowly wean that calf back again so 60 days, off comes the calf. The calf will not be upset. It will not come as a shock because it is getting less of milk every day until it's weaned. Calf jackets. Calf jackets should have come off two weeks ago. They should have come off two weeks ago because you can't take calf jackets off a calf and take it off a milk at the same time. It's too much. The shock is unbelievable to that calf. There's no milk and the cold air. So they should have been off two weeks ago. It gives them two weeks to recover from the jackets coming off and then off comes the calves, then off the machine. Again, the weller, the weller, well, I'm glad I didn't take them off because the weller's been that cold this week. At least the jackets kept the calves warm. So what they have to do now is take the calves off the machine now. Next week, they're due off next week. Keep the jackets on them for another 10 days or so on an out farm, and then go and run out, unfortunately run after them and get the jackets off. It's not ideal, but it's just the way it worked out. There's no such thing as a perfect plan. Nothing goes to plan, so, it's so maybe a wee mistake by me this year, but again, it actually worked out better for me because the calves were able to keep warm for this week for the bad weather. Uh, this, as you can see from here, look very simple. Two cups, milk, out comes the milk, out comes the water. She mixes it at the right temperature. She's already set the temperature at 39, 40 degrees. Simple, calves fed. And that is how you feed 60 calves all day long and never have to worry about them. That machine's basically the same, there's no difference in that machine. Now over here is the, the latest machine that Hallam and Lou have sent out. She's a very, very high tech machine. Uh, at the minute I don't know a while lot about them because it's really only our second batch of cast went through her. She's really up to date, fancy, a lot of high tech stuff on her. 
as the, as the days go on, as the weeks go on, I will start to learn better and get to know her and get the link to my phone. So I will be able to watch my calves better, but time will sort that. Uh, as you can see, that machine there come from DS Supplies, the agency for this machine. And young Daniel here, no questions asked, I ring him, he answers the phone. Nine times out of ten again, he can fix over the phone for me. It's just an air. Like everybody else, it's a new machine. You get your teasing problems, you get them fixed, away you go. A lot fancier over here. Green light means calf drinking, red light means the calf's already sucked. It should already have been backing out. I thought, but of course, the calf being a calf has been greedy, but it will back out. They're all up here standing, as you can see, because they see me coming into the calf shed. They think it's feeding time. They're up now looking for their milk. Uh, again, very fancy here. Fancier stalls, same purpose, just a fancier plastic, same purpose. A bit more high tech up here, which is nice to see if you can see. It's very confusing here, but hopefully you understand. Again, the cab ID number 29. That's the calves ID number, that's just as simple as that. You can see here six litres. Now that cab all them calves drunk yesterday, no problem. They're allowed six litres, they all drunk six litres. Today again they're allowed six litres. You can see this calf is drunk, it's daily amount today already. This calf has drunk four litres of a six litres. Now, that was that six litres will be spread over 24 hours, so it won't get the six litres all at once. As you can see now, it's drunk as four litres. I'll get a rest for maybe another six hours before it goes back in again. They get it all two litres. This calf now, it's in drinking already. As you can see here, it's allowed two litres. It's drunk one litre already. It's another litre to go, and that's six litres. That calf to me is happy. I don't have to worry about that calf. If I want to list, if you want to call that list, here we are, look, all yesterday's plans, calves, look, all drinking. If a calf, if that was yellow, it means that calf didn't drink yesterday all its milk, it means there's something wrong with that calf. More likely it's pneumonia. That's basically the truth. Uh, but not as you can see, look, everything's nice and green. As you can see here on the left hand side of the screen, all calves have drunk up to date. As you can see, a few lines to go, look, two litres. As you can see, everything there is a hundred percent. There's no uh, problems there whatsoever. And as you can see here, it's 42 degrees of temperature. That is high. But the time the malt gets from the machine to the stalls, the percentage, the, the temperature will drop back down again to 39 something. So that will be the right temperature. Uh, when a cast finished drinking, especially the old machines, when a cast finished got this two liters of milk, she did put about, if you want to say, a, a cup full of water through the machine for the calf to suck, basically to take the calf off the teat because the calf would just sit there all day and suck and suck at fresh air. The water does put it off. As the calves get older, they do cop on. So they actually will stay there and suck and suck. So that's maybe a fault, if you want to say it, on the older machines. But with the new machines, what they've done, which is a smart move, is when the calves finish drinking, they actually have a sprinkler that comes on at the stall. So that will wash the teeth as well as push the calf out. If a calf, if nobody's going to stand, a calf's not going to stand in front of that stall and get soaked. So the calf will back out, and as that backs out, the new one will slip in and starts away feeding away straight away. She is a very, very fast machine. She's probably could feed calves as twice as quick as the older machine. Now that's not to say the old machine's a bad machine. She's not. It's just as times move on, technology gets better. Like everything else, everything gets better, quicker. So yes, a fine machine. It's like every new machine, you have your teasing problems. There's no question that. I've yet to see a machine that doesn't have teasing problems. Probably one of the teasing problems we had with this machine was actually the water supply. She's that sensitive. She's actually picking up that the water wasn't coming there quick enough or not at the same speed. So how we could round that was actually have a header tank sitting up here. Now, that header tank was there for the two old machines. You can't feed calf feeders off mains. It can't be done. Because, simple reason, if you turn the mains off to do something in your yard, your calf machine stop. Plus, mains, like everything else, the pressure chops and changes all day, which depends what you're using in the yard for. So to keep the flow steady, we had a header tank, fed the two machines, absolutely no problem. And went the new machine, teed under the pipe, thinking, job done. No, that didn't work. She wasn't getting a steady flow of water. So, of course, Daniel will come out. Um, he studied it, and very simple. You just put a pump in that constantly pumps water to the three machines. Problem solved. Easy as that.
again on a 60 days they're probably on now if i couldn't tell you i see yeah so on 30 days there already so the calves are doing well uh the last time you seen this video that was all pens of five they are now next door uh because basically i needed the pen for the calves because the calves are coming that second fast unfortunately but it's good in one way because get it over and done with uh again over here again this uh pen of calves is finished now they'll be put out next week and come to brand new pen